Now time to put this Phantom Bevel jersey to work. Uh, in fact, I already did put it to work. If you notice, this tree is felled and I intended to film the cutting of this tree with this lovely Phantom Bevel jersey. Unfortunately, the camera slid a bit and took some lovely footage of the forest floor to the sound of wood chopping. So that's really interesting footage. I mean, it's extremely avant-garde, you know, but um, not particularly what I was looking for. So we're gonna try and just get some footage of bucking and limbing to compensate. There's the little stuff. Everything on top of that is the limbs we just did.
So here is the tree disassembled with our Phantom Bevel Jersey, the culprit. Um, I have to say, works really well. It's a little different from my usual axe. I mean, it's lighter, it's a pound lighter, and actually the handle is longer. So that took some getting used to. I was kind of um, still in the groove expecting, I mean, a pound is a big difference. And it's about four inches longer. So those are two big changes. And it, it I was, you know, maybe swinging too light and then overcompensating and swinging too hard. Um, and I did feel it by the end where, you know, my arms were a little stingy as if I was getting some handle shock. But I don't think that that's a problem inherent in the handle. I think it was just, I wasn't quite treating the tool properly. But I... I do feel like it, it, it's a great cutter. It really does a great job bucking. Um, and, and it was a really nice limbing axe. Um, it was just, uh, when you hit it properly, which I didn't always, but you know, it was really popping them off. So um, that was pretty quick and easy and fun. And I am going to finish this tree off with this axe and after I get it back home. So we're gonna buck it up and split it and I'll make another video just doing that. It was raining the other day and everything was soaking wet out here yesterday and it's still soggy. And I cut the, after limbing, my hands were all mucky, you know, like they are right now. And uh, so the handle got wet and dirty and one thing that did happen was I ended up rubbing off the uh, just the back of this rawhide here. It got all wet and it was rubbing back and forth and it, I peeled it right off. So there is probably some merit to the idea that um, the squirrel rawhide is too thin. Um, there. The edge held up perfectly, really nicely. And the handle was really nice. I mean, you can feel these divots, and but they don't really impact the swing. You know, that you slide right past them. You can feel them, but they don't, you don't snag on them. You know, it doesn't increase the friction. And I did use the rule, but I was just using the 16 mark, you know, to measure off where I needed to make my bucking uh, spots. And so I think you could honestly, if you just wanted to use an ax to do like the cordwood challenge, you could honestly get away with, you know, a zero mark and then whatever length wood you wanted to do and just have two marks and that would be your rule and you'd be fine. You know, you don't need, I mean, I guess if you're gonna use the ax in the woods for multiple purposes, it's not a bad idea to have a rule. But like, if you're just not wanting to put a bunch of marks on your handle, you could totally get away with um, just two, you know, two simple marks um, or grooves or whatever. Um, it's, uh, yeah, but it, that worked, it was cool. So um, through big chips, really nice chips, so we'll see more of that in the bucking video. But um, yeah, super happy with this, this ax. Um, even pitted and junky looking the way it was at the beginning, you know, this ax can do an incredible amount of work. Um, so that's one of the points that I was trying to make by doing this video is like, I already have some good axes, but um, I sometimes feel like people on line get so obsessed with like the newest gear and which company makes the best axe and you know I, this is just sort of an alternative you know the best axe might be the junky two dollar one that you bought at the garage sale 